Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth. On Now You Know. We're sponsored this week by A Better Route Planner, which is fantastic software to get you where you're going in your electric car. It finds all the chargers on your route and it lets you use waypoints. And now the browsers in your Tesla are fast enough to run it. And we're also sponsored by ecoware.us. We upload new designs every single week. So if you don't like the designs that we're wearing today or what's on the website this week, you can check it out next week and there'll be two new designs. That's right. And we make every purchase carbon neutral and we plant a tree for every order so you can feel good about what you wear. And it helps support this channel. All right, Jesse. Mm -hmm. I think everybody tunes in because they know they're going to get a little little dash of hope for Tesla when they watch us. Uh -huh. This week is no different. This is the short squeeze, people. It's coming up. We want to tell you why it's going to happen. So let's take a look at this chart right here. This is a chart uh, in red of the stock price of Tesla. You can see that it dipped quite low three weeks ago, mm -hmm. down sub 180. Right. And then in blue, you can see the number of shares that have been shorted in the stock. So as you can see here, it's pretty much at an all-time high, 34.7% of Tesla shares are shorted shares. So I am not a stock guy and I don't know what shorting means because again, I'm not a stock guy. What does shorting mean? It means you borrow the shares from somebody and sell them now and then buy them back later when you hope that the share price is lower. So this isn't like your normal kind of stock trading, like, oh, I bought some shares in this and I hope it goes up. Well, it's normal for a lot of traders. It's mm -hmm. normal to, sh to short shares. You sell high, buy low. But, no, you're selling the shares and then you hope that the company does worse. Right. And then you, s you buy the shares. Yeah, it's confusing, but yes, you got it. You okay. sell them first, you buy them later. Sell them first, but because usually you, you don't, you can't sell it something that you haven't bought right. yet. But here you borrow them, and when you borrow the shares, you pay about one percent interest to to basically borrow the money mm -hmm. uh, while you are shorting the, the stock. Yep. Okay. So we're at an all time high for Tesla. It's the number one shorted company right now with over ten billion dollars in shorted stock, and so uh, the number one had been Apple with $10 billion in shorted stock, but mm -hmm. now it's number two. And I wanna point something out that's kind of interesting about this because you might think, okay, well, Apple's been shorted 10 billion, Tesla's been shorted 10 billion, but how big is Apple as a company? Like how many people work there? Well, how, how big is the market share? How many billions of dollars is it worth? Oh, the market cap. Yes. The, I, I've the learned market, this one. Market capitalization. That is the number of shares times whatever the share price is. Very good. Uh, let me do a quick bit of math. Uh, nine hundred ten billion dollars. Yeah, almost a trillion dollars. And so, if ten billion dollars worth of Apple is being shorted, what percentage of Apple's worth is being shorted right now? Let's just round it up to a trillion dollars, and then ten billion of that is like one percent. Yeah, so one percent of Apple stock is being shorted. Oh, but okay. Tesla is worth forty billion dollars, and ten billion dollars is shorted. So how much of Tesla stock is being shorted right now? 34.7%. More than a third of the stock right. is being borrowed in order to sell it later. So I just want to point out, if you were to do the same thing to Apple, mm -hmm. how many billions of dollars worth of value would you have to short of Apple to get to the same percentage as you're shorting Tesla now? So 34.7% of Apple's market cap. Mm -hmm. That would be $315 billion. Right. Which is more than what Tesla's worth. Right. That's eight Teslas. Right. So, so you can start to see why it's so crazy. I could understand you're like, oh, it's at 380 right now. And I think that the stock price is going to tank. I think it's going to go down. Wouldn't you at $180 a share go like, I'm going to make a ton of money. Yeah. And I'm going to take all my money and I'm going to go buy a house with it. Or I'm going to go do something with all that money that I yeah. made shorting Tesla stock. That was a perfect exit. But you keep seeing as the stock price goes down and down and down, there are more and more people shorting it. That doesn't make any sense. You can't eat like best case scenario for any short is that the company goes bankrupt and the stock price goes to zero. Right. And... Because then you don't have to pay anything. 
All that money right. that you sold the stock for is yours. You get to keep. Right. But as the stock price goes lower and lower and lower, you can make less and less and less money because exactly. they can only go to zero. Right. The stock price can only go to zero. You cannot have a negative stock price. Right. So I just think that that's weird. Yeah, they're not following any stock school stuff. And that's because these aren't uh, real investors, in my opinion. Most of these shorts, I believe the big money in these shorts is big oil. And we, we kind of touched on this last week on, on Tesla Time News, but I don't think we really, really got the full picture mm -hmm. here. So, I mean, big oil could easily make in a year $2 trillion. Two trillion with a T. Right. We're talking, on average, big oil can make about $200 billion a month. I'm talking all oil companies. $200 billion a month. Right. So, pretend you're big oil for a moment. Mm-hmm many different companies in this uh, big oil scheme here mm -hmm. and you're making that much money every month and along comes tesla and if they get going pretty hot they're going to turn a lot of people from their ice cars into electric cars they're going to start changing transportation as we know it and you're going to be stuck with a lot of oil stuck in the ground that you wanted to get out and sell so what are your choices what can you do you could uh start building solar panels solar farms <laughs> yeah that's a great idea. Um, Why don't you do that, big oil? Damn it. You could uh, wind. Yep. That's another. Because, I mean, you know, just switch, and, just switch to the thing that they need to put the thing in their cars with. Right. But that doesn't change the fact that you have all that oil in the ground you want to get out. So, yeah, you said you can build uh, wind power. You can bring, build solar power. That's great. Uh, but what can you do to slow down Tesla? Because you've got to slow them down. The faster they operate, the more factories they can open, the more cars they can sell, the faster they're going to transition to EVs because everyone loves Tesla. Everyone loves their EVs. All the other car companies, their, their EVs are not very well loved. We've already showed that. It's true. Right? So you've got to slow down Tesla. How can you slow them down? You could try and do some investigative journalism and you could try and poke holes in Tesla's business model to see if there's like some problem. So you're going to spend a lot of time investigating whether Elon really does care about the planet. How's that going to slow down Tesla? Well, I mean, what are you suggesting? I mean, what you can either find a logical flaw in their arguments. Like, you are oh, much too logical here. Okay. They've got one thing and one thing only. Okay. Lots of money. Sure. Okay. So, so you can hire a lot of researchers. Uh, no. Okay. What then? You can th short the stock. Just what oh. you do is just pour money at the stock, even though you know you're going to lose it. Because what does that do? Every time the stock starts to inch up a little bit, mm -hmm. you just sell some more of it. So the stock price gets driven down and all those people out there, and I know you're watching right now, you bought some stock and it's lower than what you paid for it. And what do you feel right now? You feel this pit in your stomach where you're like, oh God, was that a bad decision? Mm. I don't want to tell anyone about the stock I bought. Uh, maybe I should just sell and forget the whole thing. That's what a lot of you are feeling right now. That's what a lot of even professional investors are feeling right now. Even if you like Tesla, even if you're like, I think the company is going to do well, if you are like a hedge fund manager and you're like, oh, I want to buy me up some Tesla shares, what do you think all of your investors who don't know too much about anything, they just have a lot of money and they're giving it to you to to invest in, what do you think they're going to say? They're going to go, why are you investing in Tesla? Exactly. Don't invest in Tesla. Are you crazy? Their stock is going down. I am going to pull all of my funds out of this out of this firm. I'm going to go to the guys who are shorting it. We just heard at the shareholders meeting for Tesla that shareholders got up and said, many of my intelligent friends are not buying this car because they're afraid you're going to go bankrupt. Right. So that's keeping people from buying the cars. Woohoo! Big Oil's like, yeah, it's yes, working. Yes, slowing them down. Yes. Yes. Because let me tell you, if this stock were flying through the roof right now and everything was going gangbusters, all those same people would be going, oh, I got to get myself in a Tesla. Right. I got to buy myself some Tesla stock. So nothing factual has changed here. Just the mood about Tesla isn't impacted by Big Oil shorting the company. And think about it for a second. $200 billion a month. So throwing a few billion at shorting the stock, because we're only talking 10 billion is shorting the stock right now, right. only 10 billion. Uh, that's not, that's just chump change for big oil. They spend that on advertising. They spend that on lots of things. Right. It's really not a big deal for them to lose money. And that's what they're going to do. And here's why. At some point, so much good news about the company cannot be ignored. And so we've gone through lots of FUD, right? Together, we've mm -hmm. talked about all the FUD that's been happening. But what's going to be coming up soon? Well, let's talk about the earnings call that will be happening on August 5th. At that Q2 earnings call, we could start hearing some pretty good news. For instance, so there's a Shanghai Gigafactory 
being built as we speak. Mm -hmm. And Tesla opened up orders for the Model 3 in China. And we know that some just kind of anecdotal reports that their computer systems went down. There were so many people trying to log on and order the car. Mm -hmm. But we don't know the exact number. Okay. So what happens if Tesla decides at the Q2 earnings call to tell us how many people are on that list? It could be tens of thousands of people. It could be hundreds of thousands of people. It could be a million people. It, how could it be a million people? That's, that's a, I mean, that's a lot. Well, let's think back. Mm-hmm. We were standing in line one day, mm-hmm. way back in 2016. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were waiting in line for what? The Model 3. We were going to put down our reservation for the Model 3. Yeah, we're going to put down $1,000. Mm-hmm. I put down 1000 You put down 1000 right. Uh 250,000 other people put down $1,000 for a car that did not exist. All we knew that it was going to be called the Model 3. Okay. And that was in the United States. Let's move over to China right now. The car now exists. It's in China being driven around. There's Tesla stores in China. Mm-hmm. There's a Tesla factory, a Chinese Tesla factory in China. You can buy a Chinese made car in china and i mean it's going to be cheaper than it's ever been to buy this car and let's talk about the chinese market Mm -hmm. so china's got a bigger population than the u.s what's the population of china 1.38 billion people what's the population in the united states 325 million okay so they have over a billion more people their car market is four times bigger the number of cars sold every year is four times what it is in the u.s i'm just saying it's not impossible since we had over 250,000 people in one day sign up for the car it's not impossible that they'll have a million people sign up for the model 3 now what if that information comes out at the q2 earnings call how do you think that's going to sound what will they be able to say about, well, Tesla's having a demand problem? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a hard story to sell. Maybe a million people that will have put down a deposit on the car. Right. Like serious demand. That could happen at the Q2 call. Now, the story you've been seeing for months now are these stories, right? Tesla demand is down. That's one of the biggest FUD drivers that we've seen so far is, well, Tesla had its day. They had their early adopters. But mm-hmm. those guys all have their cars now, and uh, nobody de- else wants them. Demand's drying up. If we see that happen, that's going to be a big signal for the stock to go up. Because this narrative just won't exist anymore. Like, right. Anytime anyone is like, oh, but there's no demand, you could be like, there's a million orders in China. Or, I don't know, there's a half a million orders in China. But it's not just China. Let's take some data here from Clean Technica. They have some really interesting charts here. We thought it'd be good to show some actual charts and numbers so that we can see what's really going on. Mm-hmm. So uh, how about this chart showing Tesla's average daily order rate by quarter? So what do you see there going from Q1 to Q2? Uh, it's going up. Yeah, that's worldwide order rate is estimated up by 25%. Let's switch over to North America. From Q1 to Q2, what do you see? Huge increase. 116% increase in demand. Mm-hmm. Let's look at some sales numbers. So again, from Clean Technica, we see that the Model 3 is the number one best-selling luxury car in the USA in the first quarter of 2019. In fact, it's 15% of all US luxury car sales. Now, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, oh, um, Q1 was their was their bad quarter. Yeah, that was the quarter that they were switching their uh, deliveries over to uh, China and Europe. And a lot of the cars were on ships. Right. But th- that's, they're the, f- they're, the f- they're the best selling luxury. Yeah, in their class. Car. Yeah. Yep. Oh. By a huge margin. Oh, yeah. But it's not just there. Okay. Let's look at Q1 over in Norway. It was the number one best selling car in all of Norway. And what's cool wait, about wait, this. Wait, you mean electric no. Car? You know what's cool about this chart? What? All the cars on that chart are electric, but this is the best-selling cars, even if you include ice cars. Because Norway, let's not forget, is so far advanced in terms of moving to EVs. Mm-hmm. Um, what's cool about this chart is, I think that's what charts are going to look like in the not-too-distant future in many countries. When we start finally saying enough for ice cars, enough for diesel, and we switch to EVs, you're going to see charts like this. Because let's not forget, there are many countries in Europe and around the world that have basically put a date, a time where they said, beyond this date, you are not selling any more gas burning cars. Exactly. I mean, like Ireland right now is looking at 2030. That is not very far away. UK is looking at 2040. Like, yeah, so there's countries where in a a decade or two, you won't be able to buy a nice car. So either you're going to have a pedal driven car, right? 
or it's going to be battery electric maybe fuel cell exactly uh, there's so, not much else let's get back to it though uh model three is the number one luxury car in the netherlands in q1 2019 and again this was when they were having delivery problems mm-hmm. um even last year 2018 the small and mid-sized luxury cars the model three was number one in the u.s they weren't even they weren't even making them in volume the first half of 2018 exactly like they were they had production troubles yep um let's look q1 in california Tesla Model 3 is the number one highest grossing vehicle of any fuel type or class. Listen to that for a second. Any fuel type or class of car, it was the number one highest grossing vehicle in California in Q1 of this year. So that's by revenue. So, I mean, if you look at all the other cars, Toyota Camry, Honda Civic, Honda Accord, Toyota Corolla, those cars are not in the same class. Right. Like those are all in a different class. They're all in the same class. They're all in the daily commuter kind of class. Right. But we're not done yet. Tesla Model 3 is the number one best-selling vehicle in California in the second half of 2018, the fourth best-selling car in all of 2018. Yeah. And, you know, we could go on and on. But you you know what? I think I will. Let's look at 2018. Number one electric car in worldwide sales is? Um, the, the The Model 3? Yeah. Look at all those different electric cars. Look at where Model 3 stands. It just shows you the car is knocking it off the charts. It's true, right? All right, so let's let's talk for a second about analysts. We, we oftentimes pick on analysts who are very bearish on Tesla, mm-hmm. but let's talk about a pretty middle-of-the-road, kind of bullish analyst mm-hmm. on Tesla, Adam Jonas from Morgan Stanley. Right. Um, he predicted in 2016 that Tesla wouldn't produce 500,000 cars until 2025. Mm-hmm. So let's take a look at this chart here because he said that Tesla would only deliver 246,000 vehicles in 2020. 2020 hasn't happened yet. Right. But in fact, last year, 2018, Tesla produced 245,240 vehicles. So, But wait, he's a Tesla bull, and the bulls are the ones who think that the stocks are going to go up. Right. But he was underestimating Correct. Tesla. But Correct. He's, a, he's a Tesla bull. Right. So, like, whenever they write an article and they're like, Tesla Bull thinks this. Right. That, that's who they're talking about. Right. So, just keep that in mind. Now, mm-hmm. I want to talk about the shorts. Shorts go by this little moniker, especially on Twitter, right? Uh, the this dollar sign Tesla Q. Um, if you see that and you've been wondering, like, what is that all about? Well, putting the Q in the end is is the symbol for short. So, that that's kind of their moniker now. So, Jennifer Sensaba, she's from Clean Technica. She's a writer there. She decided to set up a fake Tesla Q short seller Twitter account to learn more about the other side. And so what she did was, and you really should go read her full article. We'll right. put the link down you below, know, but two sides to every story, right? You should hear the other side and what they're what they're thinking. Exactly. So she said, "Quote, as far as the nasty unhinged end of Tesla Q goes, I get it now." It's just cheap entertainment for those guys. I could see a marked difference between my personal Twitter feed and the fake accounts feed. And so basically what she talked about in this article is it brought her enjoyment to look forward to being able to tweet some short seller stuff on her Twitter account. She got kind of hooked on it, on this like, wait for someone to say something good and then go attack them. And this is um, not new to the internet. It's just called being a troll. It's just being like, wow, wow, you don't know this, or I'm going to make you upset, and then I'm going to make you feel dumb, or I'm just going to say mean things about you. And that's what she largely saw, was that there wasn't a lot of reasoned arguments on the other side. It was just a lot of tribalistic, kind of fanatical name-calling at the other side. Mm. But let's go back to some actual data. So big shout out here to hypercharts.co. This is Gally over at Hypercharts. Paper changes a uh, chart company fantastic charts you should go check it out mm-hmm. this is a chart of tesla's annual vehicle deliveries and the last year we're seeing here is 2018 now let's look at morgan stanley's forecast again they're kind of bullish they're mm-hmm. saying 360 to 400,000 vehicles are expected to be delivered in 2019 mm-hmm. but let's say to be less bullish the tesla's numbers are going to be flat about 90,000 cars delivered for each of the next three quarters. So that would be 333,000 cars delivered for 2019. And so 90,000, you're saying Q4 numbers? Yep, just keep Q4 numbers you know, flat across the year, other than Q1, which is lower. So you're ignoring the Shanghai Gigafactory. Yep. You're ignoring um, more production, yep. any production growth whatsoever. Yep, I'm just trying to be kind of pessimistic. Okay. And so if we're kind of... 
conservative and we say that Tesla will deliver 333,000 cars this year, that would be a 42% increase over an already record-breaking year of 2018. And numbers are hard. So let's look at a graph I put together. That big red bar would be 2019, my pessimistic 333,000 car um, prediction. How's that look? What does that look like? Um, it looks pretty exponential. Looks pretty, looks like an S curve. Yeah. Looks like an S curve. So what I'm saying is when the numbers finally come out at the end of this year, mm -hmm. it's going to be pretty hard to look at that chart right there and start pointing to, well, demand problems, production problems. Right. Because it's, that's just growth. That's a lot of growth. And that's a pessimistic number I'm giving you. So what else is coming up this year? Um, it's probably going to be another Marvel movie. Yeah, there will be a Marvel movie, but yeah. let's uh, switch back to Tesla here. What, oh. what's, what's Tesla going to be doing later this year? Oh, my God. There's this um, little model that we went out and visited uh, the reveal for this, earlier this year. Uh, the Model Y? Model Y, which is a crossover, which means that just the fact that it's a crossover means it's going to have two and a half times the market size than the Model 3. Right. Let's not forget that for a second. The Model 3 is already a really good selling car, but it is in a market segment of sedan, mid-sized luxury sedan, that is rather small. The crossover market is huge because right. most people don't want to drive a sedan anymore. Most people want to drive a crossover. The Model Y is a crossover. And yet no no one has talked about the Model Y since a week after its unveiling. Like right. that was the last time we heard about the Model Y. I don't know why, but it doesn't make any sense. Right. Okay. You have the Model 3, which is the most fantastic vehicle I have ever driven. Um, and And... It's not just me saying it. People who drive gas cars, people who think that electric cars are dumb, are like, this car is amazing. Take the Model 3. Boop, raise it up a little bit. Pop a hatchback on there. Add some seats. Optional seven seats. There's your, there you go. You just made a better Model 3. You just answered why there wasn't that much excitement about the Model Y. You know right. why? why? Because the Model 3 was already here. We were already so excited by it that we were like, yeah, okay, Model Y, you're not going to make it yet? Fine. We're, we're so excited about this car that we've already got. It's true. So that's what it is. When the Model Y does actually come out, though, it's going to fit the needs of so many consumers. It's going to sell fantastically. So that means that now we're going to have this whole new car that Tesla has for a whole new group of consumers. Right. But, you know, Tesla can't stake its whole future on the Model Y, Right. Sure. If it's only 2.5 times the market size of the Model 3. It's this chart we're looking at now of, of sales, mm -hmm. it's going to dwarf that because you're going to throw this into the mix and it's going to have just so many. They're, the only problem will be production. Right. So now let's look at some other things that are coming up for Tesla. There's already been the Raven Model S and X. I won't call it refresh, but basically update. update. And so that's already being taken really well. I mean, we heard Eli earlier this week mm -hmm. talking about his Raven refresh and how it's just the most amazing car he's ever seen. Mm -hmm. Both he and Alex from E for Electric said it's probably the best car there is. Yeah. But there's going to be a refresh of the Model S and X. Right. And we don't know everything that's going to be a part of that refresh. And I wanted to put it to you like this. If you are someone who can afford a Model S or a Model X, um, you're going to be the type of person who wants the very best because that's typically if you're very rich, you want the very best. There's a, there's a big segment of that market. Now, I'm not saying everyone who buys a Model S or X is like that. I'm going to be happy with Sparky. I, I understand. Well, I'm not talking about you. Okay. <laughs> segment of the market, got to have the best. Model S and X for the longest time were the best. Right. Model 3 comes out. Hey, Suddenly, it's, that's, the best. that's newer. Right. The Model 3 is newer. The Model S and X haven't changed right as soon as this refresh comes out the balance will be restored in, <laughs> in the force universe, yes and um you know the model s and x are going to be the cars that they should be which are like super luxury they're going to have right. an update of, with better materials and all the things that the luxury market people care about because basically the demand was not really gone right. it's just that it was like how can i show up my friends at the golf course with a model s if they can show up in the Model 3 and they're they're basically neck and neck, right. you know? Um, yes. what, what an amazing problem for a company to have. Exactly. Right. That's going to happen. And now we're, we're going to find out the demand wasn't really gone. Every mm -hmm. quarter that goes by, we're going to see the demand wasn't an issue. And then 
wait till this China factory is online. Right now, it's not really a news story for most of the mainstream media. It's like, they don't even really mention it. The times they do mention it, it's this risky factory. It's right. risky. Even though the Chinese banks financed it, it's still it's risky, risky. Right. Oh, we don't know if it's going to happen. Even though it's happening faster than you've seen any factory being built ever. Right. It eliminates all the tariffs. And they keep bringing up this FUD the mainstream media does where it's like, well, China's getting rid of their incentives. We've told you about an incentive they're not getting rid of. In fact, one that they're adding, which means that if you live in some of the bigger Chinese cities, the only way to get a car is going to be to drive an electric car because that's the only way you'll get a license plate. Right. So, so. that's happening. And then we got another little day coming up sometime, mm -hmm. Elon said, probably by the end of the year, which is Battery Powertrain Investor Day, where they're going to reveal all kinds of who knows what about technology that they've been working on with the powertrain and the batteries. Right. And here's the thing. The 2012 Model S has still not been beaten by the competition. It's super weird because it seems like if the competition wanted to, they could. It seems like you could sit down in a room and say, okay, guys, we're going to make an e-tron, but how about instead of making a big, boxy, inefficient machine that for whatever reason, only has 204 miles of range, even though this is 2019. What if we made a sleek, smaller, basically a Model S, and just cram enough batteries in there to make sure that it can go a little bit further than the first car that Tesla came out with? Yeah, but they started so late. They basically only started a couple of years ago, and they didn't really, really start it like really trying. Right. So yeah, they haven't beat that. And now Tesla's going to come out with embarrassing new technology that even beats anything. I mean, it's, right. they're so Tesla, far ahead. It's a lead. They have a huge lead over the competition. And the competition has been saying to us, there's going to be this new battery technology. And when that happens, we're going to acquire it. We're going to get it. We're going to buy it because we have all the money in the world. But Tesla is actually going to be implementing it into the cars. Right. They have been doing this. They have been working on it behind the scenes. Okay, they do not talk about it all the time because that is like super top secret. Right. You have like if anyone is like watching this who has been working on it, you're probably chuckling to yourself. You're like, I have a stack of NDAs a mile high. Right. There's no way I could even mention a hint that I was working on battery technology at Tesla. Right. Tesla has just been saying like, we got the 2170 battery cell. Well, isn't this pretty cool? Nifty, right? Meanwhile, behind the scenes, they're acquiring Maxwell Technologies, which everyone did hear about and everyone thought wasn't going to happen. It happened. They acquired it. Maxwell Technologies has a bunch of awesome battery technology, ultra capacitor technology, yeah, and, and the, Tesla's just going to roll out with it one day. And the cool thing is they don't have to go forward, you know, 40 times better. They just have to be 10 or 20% improvement over what they've got now. And that would be mind blowing because it, they've already got ranges of 370 miles. Right. It's steamrolling the competition. Battery and powertrain day. It's going to be another curb stomp on top of many curb stomps that Tesla has been uh, dealing to the big auto industry right. of just like, where are your cars? Why well, do your cars suck? To that point, the other big thing that's coming up at some point this year mm -hmm. is the Tesla pickup truck reveal. And when that day happens... It's going to turn a lot of heads. It's going to be a big news story for pretty much everybody because no matter how crazy this car looks, no matter how sci-fi this pickup looks. The crazier looks, the better. Yes. The crazier the better, and I'll tell you why. What makes you click on anything on the internet? It has to be new. It has to be exciting. Something has to catch your eye, right? And so... Like Truckla. Right. Exactly. That's an excellent example. It was a overnight success right and she i mean simone gertz is fantastic yep. i absolutely love her youtube channel if you haven't seen truckla you should go check it out but really smart tesla truck is in the works make one model three you just chop the back portion off and do a bunch of work bingo you have a story catches everyone's attention right what do you think a sci-fi truck is going to do you're going to click on that article there's nothing you can do to prevent yourself from clicking on it and when you everyone see is going to see it yes everyone and when you see the specs for the truck it'll be undeniable and for the people who hadn't heard of or seen the model 3 because they live in an area where it's just truck country they're gonna go whoa this truck looks 
like it's from the future. So I clicked on the article. They told me some of the specs. That's mind blowing. And now I'm going to go look up the company. Guess what I might consider doing if I'm not getting the pickup truck already? I might be interested in the Model 3. I might be interested in the Model Y. I might be interested in a Model S or X. It's just an advertisement. That's exactly what Elon wants. He wants the truck to look bananas, right? So that way you click on it. This reminds me of another CEO who's trying to tell the story of his company and the great products they were making. But some people got it mm -hmm. and so many people didn't. Who am I thinking of right now? Yes, sir. Steve, what do we do about the press? I mean, the... Wall Street Journal reporters get up in the morning, sell Apple short, and then go write stories about us. And it's clear that it's a perception versus reality problem. Yeah. They don't know anything about operating systems. They don't know anything about tools. They don't know what's going on in the future. They don't know that we're building icebergs, and you build them from the bottom up. Sure. Um, you know, I'm sure that a lot of you have had this experience where you're changing, you're growing as a person, and people still, people tend to treat you like you were 18 months ago. And it's really frustrating sometimes when you're growing up and you're becoming more capable and you, you've solved, you know, maybe you had some personality quirks you've kind of gotten over, whatever it may be, and people still treat you like you were a year to 18 months ago, it can be very frustrating. Well, it's the same with a, a company. Uh, it's the same with the press. Uh, the press is going to have a lag time. And the best thing that we can do about the press is, is, is to, to, you know, embrace them, do the best we can to educate them about the strategy, but to keep our eye on the prize. And that is turning out some great products, communicating directly with our customers as best we can, getting the community of people that are going to make this stuff successful like yourselves in the loop so you know everything, and just marching forward one foot in front of the other. And the press will take care of it. It's like the stock price. The press and the stock price will take care of themselves. By the end of this year, it's going to look quite different. And I, I, you know, when you, when you, I mean, I'm like an old man now in this industry, and I've seen the ups and downs. And when you see enough of them, you know that's going to happen. So when you get up in the morning and the press is selling Apple short, go out and buy some shares. You know, that's what I would do. That's what I have done. Does any of that sound familiar <laughs> wow. to you? <laughs> we gotta bring him back from the dead and just like maybe not the jeans. That those those jeans were pretty. I don't remember them ever looking cool. Whatever year that was. <laughs> That was that year. <laughs> Boy, you could, I mean, forget carbon dating. That's, you can, down to the month probably, you could learn exactly when that was. But So other than his fashion sense, I think Steve Jobs hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. And everything he said there is so, it just brings goosebumps to me to see that moment. Because we all know what happened after that moment, right? <laughs> it turns out that he was exactly right. The press and most people didn't get what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And then a year or so later, they're like, Oh, I get it. This is awesome. <laughs> right. Right. And then the company. And that was just the beginning, right? Like right. Uh, this was, you know, look, I mean, at the, look at the computers behind exactly. it. Exactly. Um, this is before, you know, the, the eMac, you know, the, the, the aerodynamic computer. This right. is before. Um, the iPhone. This is, this is before the iPhone. This is before the iPod. Right. Like, th this is, he knew stuff was coming. Right. But no one understood. With the iPod. Right. Can you imagine a time before you had an iPod or like a, a MP3 player of any kind? Right. I mean, this is back when if I said Apple and controlling the music industry, you would have been like, what? <laughs> right. That's what's happening now. It's just that nobody can see it. Right. Except for a few people. You guys can see it. Right. And that should give you some hope that we know what we're talking about. These things do repeat themselves. Right. And I want to mention just one thing that we haven't mentioned during this episode, which is actually probably one of the biggest things that's going to cause this short squeeze, but we're not even counting it in the equation what? on purpose. What? what? Robo-taxis. Oh, yeah. I'm discounting it here because, you know, so many people are like, oh, it'll never happen. Okay, great. It'll never happen. Yeah, okay. Great. Um, uh, but imagine if it does happen on top of all the other stuff that's happening right, right. here. But I'm just saying, I think the short squeeze can happen and the stock price can go through the roof without even robo-taxi taking place. Cars I mean, that you it still will take have place, to but... mostly drive yourself. Right. Not I mean, mostly. I don't, I don't mostly drive my car. Right. 99% of the time it me. drives you. Exactly. No, and, and I do think robo-taxi is going to take place. But I'm just saying, when you're trying to figure out, like, is it worth holding on to that Tesla stock? I would. Boy, there's so many people that reach out to me and they're like... Thank you guys, because I was, I don't know what if I was going to sell my stock or not. And it feels like I'm a hotline. It's like, hello, <laughs> Tesla hotline. How can I help you? Stay long, stay strong. 
This always happens. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's why it was so great to hear Steve Jobs say it, that yes, it goes up, it goes down. I mean, once you realize that and you look at a stock chart in that way, I know that a year seems like a long time. I know that you're like, what, I have to wait a year? Yeah, you're gonna have to wait a year. You're gonna, you're gonna have to wait <laughs> more than a year. Hold your stock for a long time. Right. It is not for selling in a year. It's for selling in a few years, many years. The more years, the better, because that stock is just, in my opinion, mm -hmm. going to go through the roof. Right. Thank you so much for watching this video. Now you now know. You know.